Okay, this is a long play game, playing over the board and playing as white. Um, prefer to play as black um, in the recent uh, chessable tournament with the higher level uh, high level players. It's proving that white really isn't the be all and end all. Um, a lot of um, players playing as black were winning um, out and out. So there's a shift in the mindset of playing chess basically at the end of the day being first does not always mean you're going to win or gain an advantage so anyway we played as white here and opened with e4 nice and steady away and opponent came down with the old c6 c5 sorry and developed the knight and then they're looking at this slow fianchetto thing in my head it's slow obviously but it's not slow to people playing that style and so we pushed through the center looking to attack the pawn and they did actually capture so we captured back with the queen queen's got a nice diagonal through to the rook hopefully fingers crossed that they forget themselves or that they continue with this movement here and we get the bishop uh, that wasn't happening so they pushed the pawn down so we look to develop the bishop attacking the knight so move the queen again a looking for cheap these are basically cheap positions that were allowed to uh, attack you know we're going for this particular position here which would be an instant checkmate obviously it's easily defended by either dropping the pawn down so we knew this uh, so we worked out that basically if they did have any sense which it looks like they were more awake um and sharp because obviously they spotted the queen attacking the rook here so I'm thinking they're going to be able to do that so bring the queen across maybe doing a roundabout maneuver trying to come to this position here to keep some sort of pressure on this pawn if this pawn has to move so it's holding this pawn to ransom in a sense so they can actually move that pawn if we get our queen here so I was thinking a few moves ahead uh, but they brought the queen down. I didn't put that in my mental Rolodex at all. And I sat there and I thought, oh, I feel like I'm going to be a bit too arty here. I didn't really want to give them what they wanted. You know, taking the taking the queen, I don't know, it, would it have been the right thing to do? Um, the computer is actually saying taking the queen because what I didn't want to do was develop his uh, knight, then attacking our bishop and we're having to move our bishop again. was going to look to just bring it back here. I think the computer's basically saying should have just gone simple but we went a bit arty um wanting to develop more pieces you know keeping the initiative as we've been practicing so they captured and we captured and then they came down and tapped our um, bishop with the pawn and brought the bishop back um again still really wasn't too happy with the bishop support in the pawn here but um probably having sights of maybe just bringing it to here just to get some movement going with the bishop so they push down with the pawn probably looking now to stop this type of action here the bishop coming here or even the knight coming and attacking our bishop so now we can develop the knight looking for this nice position here but I think the opponent was a little bit switched on in that sense so we jumped to the square and then they castled so in my head I'm thinking well I might as well still try and attack you and keep you busy on that side because I don't really have anything clear to actually work with but I do have options of uh, castling on the queen side or the king side so that was um, fairly okay for myself so we brought the knight up it's probably a bit previous really I mean I don't really need to attack the king I could have just left the knight there and developed a piece of some sort computers saying um, bishop e3 Bishop e3. Hmm, nice tantalizing spot, maybe. Knight coming here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But we didn't do that. We went with the knight. Then the king came down. Then we attacked the king again. So move the knight out of the way. Because I, sometimes I like the double pawns. But on the other, on other side of the coin, I'm also trying to practice well. Don't want to double them on their turns. I mean, if we double the pawns, there's no clear way in for any of the rooks on this side. So I thought, oh, I might need to save that. So we brought the knight back, which allowed them, their knight to jump into this key square here. So we attack the higher piece with a lesser piece, which is the pawn. 
and then we attack the knight. All pretty straightforward stuff and capture with the bishop, still having the option of castling kingside or queenside. So we capture the bishop and then we castle on the queenside. Um and um denied about it, but um, because if we hadn't have done, just going one, two, three here and there. Yep, one second, I think I've gone too far. Where's the castling? Right, yeah, so their rook has moved and it's attacking the pawn. So if we went running and castled on this side, then obviously the rook was going to take the pawn. I was thinking of pushing the pawn up, but then I thought, well, I'm blocking my bishop and maybe the bishop needs to be working. So that's why we castle on the queen side. So we're now attacking the pawn, which is unprotected because their knight has blocked their um, um, bishop from protecting the pawn. Again, this uh, this opponent's um, very switched on, and I'm just trying to find a way in. So then the knight is coming down. It's looking for some stealth move, you know, either attacking the rook and the pawn. So I'll bring the bishop back just to try and stop that area here, knowing for well he potentially is coming here, maybe putting a two on one on this pawn here. Potentially maybe bring the bishop up because it's also attacking the um, bishop. So they do bring the knight down and we bring the bishop up. And I didn't calculate this maneuver. Um, so that did throw me a little bit because obviously I can't take because obviously the rook has got the pin through onto the king. So we move the king out of the way and then they take the bishop off the board. Now at this point here, and this was an area of concern for me because I'm, I've got the rook in the centre of the board as far as I'm concerned. But it's defending um, the pawn. I'm thinking, are they attempting to come and double up? But then it's come and attacked our pawn here. So we move the bishop so the rook can defend. So at this moment in time, not too happy really with my position. So they do a bishop move and I'm thinking it's giving space for the, you know, the rook to come or double up on this side. So a small piece attack and a higher piece decide to attack the rook, see what it wants to do. I thought maybe it was going here and then potentially coming here for a doubling on this side. But they went right back so I thought, oh have I won a bit of a tempo here? So my brain did get a little bit giddy. So I brought the rook across and just protecting the pawn for now with the idea of potentially pushing here and maybe doubling the rooks here on this side. Then they did the pawn push and for me I was concerned about this pawn pushing down here and you know with the support of this then they're kind of owning the file so um, my focal point was on basically just trying to stop that off. Even before we did this rook move here I was thinking well this is the way they're going to champion it going to get the rook across here and stuff like that. I was blindsided to that fact because what they have is this bishop and it's got an x-ray through to both of my rooks. So my complete focal point was defending something that wasn't actually happening at this moment in time. It could have occurred but I didn't see the ramifications of that pawn move. So they quickly moved their bishop and x-rayed through to the rooks so we moved the rook down and we captured so at this point here during the game as, as it happened i did say to myself well on this board it doesn't look that bad yeah he's got like uh, two rooks and i've got a bishop and a rook so we've got two pieces he has to work his rooks together and in order to utilize the strength that the gauge bar is showing on here and we have put practice in you know yes our position is not the best so we have to now really kind of focus on attempting to get towards his king somehow if he allows us at this moment in time the gauge by the computer saying well you don't really have a cat and nails chance really um so they pushed the pawn down and i pushed up looking to a target the pawn try and make some space around the king area and they did actually capture i was kind of surprised at that so we captured with the bishop and the king comes down so the idea for me is the, the strength for me really for them would be getting the rooks working together if they're working singularly then we might stand a chance you know now we've got space around their king area a little bit you know we may be may be able to get to it but again one of the key things would be if i was black would be to try and get the rook off the board 
And that was my whole concern. I was thinking, well, if he gets these rooks doubled up, he's just going to pile off and take my rook off the board. So they had all those options. This is why the gauge bar is going, you know, singing like crazy for black. Because if the opponent does that and just gets our rook off the board, the bishop against the rook is probably going to struggle depending on the position. So we move the king up. So now in my head, I'm going... Okay, I can work with this so long as he does not get my rook off the board. So let's see. So I'm just sitting waiting to, for him to get my rook off the board. That's all I'm waiting for. So I move the king up. Now I can support this bishop. Now my rook can move around a little bit. So they're coming for this center pawn here. I'm thinking, well, if I can get my king across, king across here, then at least then maybe the rook is supporting them. That's the way they're going to probably get the rook off the board if I have to take this pawn but I'm not going to take it if I don't have to so we push past the pawn just not, don't want to give it any more strength and support with this pawn here and then they start moving their rook across the back and like obviously thinking looking to come here so I'm breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief another gauge bar so and yeah you're still losing massively out and out losing um, but you don't see the gauge bar when you're playing the game so during the game, I'm going, mm, yeah, I'm feeling fairly comfortable with this. I am worried about this, but how can I get to their king? So we push up the pawn just to see whether or not we can block anything off. I mean, it could challenge and take and work his way around the back and come around here and stuff like that. I was expecting all those sort of things. In my head, I was going, he's got two rooks. If he works them well together, we're dead meat. But there's the odd chance that he won't. So again, he moves his rook again, coming supporting the pawn. So we're back to the plan A of bringing the queen across, king across and supporting the pawn. Out and out winning, minus 10.2 it is. Um, so that's in black's favour. We don't stand a chance here. So the rook drops down. Again, maybe I'm thinking of looking to double up. So we bring the king across now, just taking it off of the line because if he gets this, then he's obviously going to be able to power drive onto our bishop and we, we, we don't really stand a chance. I mean, realistically, he could, just, he could have done that anyway and we would have lost the bishop. But they continued with the pawn push. So a pass pawn in the eyes of the guides, it says pass pawns always want to be pushed. But I think really, I think we putting the rook here, putting pressure onto the bishop, then I lose the rook, I won't be able to chase this pawn because my king would have to get involved in the exchange over here. So this is why we're out and out losing. But because we don't see the engine when we're playing the game, we're playing a human. So we move the king down, looking in readiness to support, and they push the pawn down. Okay, so now we bring the rook across, not really wanting to take so now they're getting a bit arty uh, because they've got like a two on one here got a two on one there um i did see all of these maneuvers i thought well okay um if he does do that he's definitely i'm um, definitely bringing the bishop here and it's from from that movement when he did this here i, I thought hoping fingers crossed once he's done the paw move and the rook move here that he's going to come down my picture was this Get the bishop here this was not guaranteed in any way shape or form because like i said if he worked his rooks together then we would really have been scuppered because our rook would be off the board yeah so get the bishop here and sit the bishop on this pawn here if we can get this rook to get a check on the king maybe and if the only problem would be is if the king comes down here and starts working its way down but if it got to here, it can't go any further because this pawn is blocking and this pawn is blocking. So it would probably be a checkmate position if I got the rook there. I have the picture in my head that this pawn is, up, I think, just going to greedy munch these pawns. I did think they probably would have maybe I don't know it would have been better maybe just bringing this rook here supporting this pawn and then going to take these pawns then I would have had to lose my rook because this rook would be just taking stuff off the board and I would never get to this square so we move the bishop 
following the plan that we had set. So we're just waiting for the opponent now basically to make those mistakes. So they went greedy munching. We've covered the greedy munching in our earlier videos, mostly about the greedy munching queen, but any piece that goes greedy munching when they're in the, well, in this game here, they had more advantage if they work their pieces together. So it's all a key lesson for myself, always, all the time, is working those key pieces together. The advantage that the opponent has is the two rooks. So working them together to help support their pieces, etc., would have enhanced this capturing. Still showing the out and out winning. Um, so we grab the pawn because we have sights of getting this rook here. Not about getting this pawn, because it you know it'd be a check on the king and a, no way we wanted to get some pressure and that was the only thing i could see that could bother them but when you've got pawns in front of your head and you you win you you're winning you know in your head you're winning nothing's going to stop you so the opponent went and grabbed the other pawn so we brought the bishop through it's a fairly it looks like a total non-move. It looks like it's guarding this square so that then if the rook goes here, then the rook takes and the bishop takes. So I that's why I believe the opponent made their next move because they were comfortable and happy that this square was going to be covered by their rook. So now they're going greedy munching for the third pawn. So now we can put the check in and win a bit of tempo. Gauge bar still not loving it. Yep, it's saying there's loads of things that the opponent can do. Uh, bringing the rook c7, blocking. I did expect that. What was I going to do at that point? The bishop was looking to come here to put a check on the king if that happened. I was hoping that the king would be going back or going to the side. Ideally, in an ideal world, that's what you'd expect. But really, all they needed to do was to go back here. So I was feeling fairly okay with the position, even if they had done the rook c7 move. Now it's basically saying it's a draw. And I'm happy, obviously I didn't see the gauge bar then, I'm just happy that basically I can get this bishop here with this type of manoeuvres, whatever. Um, so at that point I kind of breathed a sigh of relief. I was hoping he's just going to go running, you know, grabbing the pawn. So we brought the bishop up and then they took their time. This was probably the longest um, think that they had. So they brought the rook down and we brought the rook up, putting the check on, brought the rook down. And I was so happy and pleased with that.